I get this question many times from my patients. What is an ovarian cyst? What does the word cyst mean? Is it same as PCOD? Are the cysts dangerous? Do they always need a surgery? So let's decode all this today. So hello everyone, I'm Dr. Anjali Kumar. I once again bring greetings to you from Maitri. Maitri is a space where we talk anything and everything about women's health. So ovarian cysts are sacs or bubble-like things usually filled with some fluid in the ovary or on the surface of the ovary. They may vary in size from being very tiny, few millimeters only, to huge, weighing up to almost 4 to 5 kgs. Now, ovarian cysts are very common. Most of the ovarian cysts are harmless and they cause no symptoms and they go away on their own. So, there are basically two types of cysts. So, the first are known as physiological cysts. Now, these are normal cysts. They keep developing and they disappear also on their own. While there are some which are pathological cysts, which means they are not normal and they definitely need medical attention. So first let's talk about what are the physiological uh, cysts. These are also known as functional cysts. They are normal and they develop and disappear every cycle. So the first is follicular cyst. So your ovaries, they grow small cysts called follicles each month. Out of these multiple follicles, one follicle gets selected and is now called as dominant follicle. About roughly halfway through your menstrual cycle, an egg bursts out of this dominant follicle and this event is called ovulation. A follicular cyst forms when the follicle doesn't rupture, doesn't release its egg and continues to grow. But this tends to regress on its own by the end of the cycle and no treatment is required for this. While there is another cyst which can form in a cycle and this is a very usual finding on the ultrasounds. This is known as corpus luteum cyst. So after follicle releases its egg, it shrinks and begins to produce estrogen and progesterone. These are the hormones which are required for the conception. And the follicle is now called corpus luteum. But sometimes the opening from where the egg came now gets blocked. So the fluid builds up inside the corpus luteum causing a cyst. Once again, this is normal and no treatment is required and this regresses on its own by the end of the cycle. Now let's talk about the cysts which are not normal. These are known as pathological cysts. So the first is a dermoid cyst. Now this is the most interesting and the fanciful of all the cysts. Why? Because this cyst can contain tissues like hair, skin, cartilage, fat or even a tooth. Also called a teratoma, this cyst falls from the reproductive cells which makes eggs in the ovary. So these are known as germ cells. Now this type of a cyst, dermoid cyst, usually needs a surgery. This has a serious risk of causing a torsion of the ovary. This means that the ovary twists on its own pedicle which supplies it the blood supply. Now this is a medical emergency. So the ovarian torsion may reduce or stop the blood supply to the ovary can, and can actually have serious consequences of even losing an ovary. So in case you have been diagnosed with a dermoid cyst, and you suddenly develop severe pain in the lower abdomen, especially on one side, with some nausea, vomiting or a fainting attack, this could be sign of an ovarian torsion and you're supposed to rush to the emergency as soon as possible. Second, cyst adenoma. Now this type of cyst develops from the cells 
which are present on the surface of the ovary. Now this cyst might be filled with a watery material or sometimes a mucous cyst, you know slimy kind of a material. This cyst can press upon the surrounding important structures and can cause serious symptoms in case it becomes very big. A cyst adenoma can grow very large, even up to 3 to 4 liters. One of my patients came up with a complaint that she can't zip up her jeans. That was her only complaint. So large cyst adenomas usually need surgery while the smaller cyst adenomas can be severely monitored and we can just, you know, uh, keep them under regular monitoring. Even a cyst adenoma can cause an ovarian torsion. So once again, in case you've been diagnosed with a cyst adenoma and you develop severe pain, it's time to rush to the emergency. Third, endometrioma. So endometriosis is a condition which causes the endometrial cells. So these are the cells which line the inside of the uterus to grow outside the uterus, usually on the surface of the ovary. So this endometrial lining bleeds at the end of the cycle exactly the same way the endometrial lining bleeds inside the uterus. This bleeding keeps getting collected and blood filled cysts form. These are called endometriomas. They can be very painful. They contain old blood and are also called chocolate cysts. So to know more about endometriosis, watch our video on endometriosis. Now these can be treated either medically or surgically depending upon the symptoms and their size. Fourth, malignant cysts. Now malignant cysts or the cancerous cysts fortunately are rare. They can happen at any age but are more common in the older or the postmenopausal women. They usually do not cause any symptoms and may be actually diagnosed accidentally. So it is very important for a woman to have a yearly gynae checkup even if you do not have any symptoms. So now let's talk about what can be the symptoms of an ovarian cyst. Most of the ovarian cyst may cause no symptoms at all and can go away on their own too. But a large ovarian cyst can cause pelvic pain, which could be simply a dull ache or a sharp pain, even going up to lower back and thighs. Fullness, pressure or heaviness in your belly or the abdomen. It can cause bloating. If the cyst ruptures, which means if it bursts inside, it can cause sudden or severe pain. If the cyst causes twisting of the ovary, there could be severe pain along with nausea and vomiting. Some women also have problems emptying the bladder or the bowel completely because of the pressure of the uh, cyst over these organs. Some women uh, report a symptom of urinating more often because the big ovarian cyst may actually press on the bladder. Some women experience painful periods, especially in case of endometriomas. And remember, in most cases, actually no symptoms. So once again, it's important to go for a yearly kinetic checkup. Is having an ovarian cyst same as having PCOD? No, not at all. PCOD or polycystic ovary is a hormonal lifestyle condition in which the ovary forms many tiny, usually sub-centimeters, maybe just few millimeters in size, cysts all over. These cysts produce abnormal hormones leading to irregular periods, weight gain, acne, scalp hair fall and so many things. So it's absolutely different from an ovarian cyst. Will my ovarian cyst require a surgery? Not really. Only 5 to 10 percent of women might need a surgery to remove an ovarian cyst. Your cyst may require surgery if you are past menopause or if your cyst does not go away after several menstrual cycles or is getting larger or looks unusual or suspicious on the ultrasound or it is causing pain or pressure symptoms on the surrounding organs. So most of the surgeries for the ovarian cyst these days are done laparoscopically in which through very tiny incisions 
we perform the surgery. So obviously the advantages are it causes lesser pain, the recovery is faster. It is important that all the cysts are sent for biopsy post their removal to check for malignancy. Of course, many cysts might be treated simply by medicines only. These medicines could be oral contraceptive pills or maybe progesterone pills. So there is no way to prevent most ovarian cysts, but regular checkups and pelvic examinations ensure that any changes in your ovaries are diagnosed as early as possible and the right treatment can be started at the earliest. So today, if you found this information useful, please do not forget to share, like and subscribe and we will see you soon.